another exciting episode of Perpetually Ajar. I am one of your hosts, Katie Johnson, and for Ruby Abridged, Kruby Productions, I play Weishni, Penny Pella Donuts, Cinderfall, and Velvet the Chocolate Rabbit. I am also a producer and writer for our lovely parody show and a host of this amazing podcast. And this is my host... Hey, what's up, guys? It's Bo. I voice uh, <coughs> Winter and Ilya for <laughs> Ruby Abridged <laughs> slash Kirby Productions. I am also the lead director of the VR Shorts, one of the lead writers for that, and also your co-host for this amazing podcast. Hooray! And of course, today, like we usually like to do, we have a special guest that has snuck into our studio, and we would like you to meet them if you would like to introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. It's Elizabeth Maxwell, other voice of Winter Schnee. <laughs> <laughs> the actual voice of Winter Schnee. <laughs> Canon. And we can just call it the OG. <laughs> the OG. OG. There you go. I like oh that. Oh, my gosh. OG Winter Schnee. That's your, like, rapper name? <laughs> I'll take it. I'm terrible at rapping, but, you know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's, like, a joke in here for Vanilla Weiss or, like, <laughs> Vanilla Ice. Oh, that's so, it begins. I'm so happy. It's so great. But yeah, so we have a special guest here today, and that's always fun. And I just want to know, what have you guys been up to? Do you have any games that you guys have been playing or anything you guys have been obsessed with lately? Ooh, let's see. For me, um, I am always like several steps behind the general populace in terms of like <laughs> what I'm playing and what I'm watching uh, because with how busy um, acting keeps me, I'm rarely able to uh, watch things in like the normal amount of time that other people do. Um, but okay, I'm almost for some reason a little bit like embarrassed to admit this, but I just finished... Well, not finished. I'm about to finish the last episode of Cheer on Netflix. Ooh. <laughs> That's fun. Um, which uh, it's actually made me like super nostalgic for my uh, theater days, like back in high school and college. Uh. You know, that feeling of being, you know, part of like uh, a large community that's all working towards yeah. the same goal. Mm -hmm. Um. I also um, have been binging Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Well, I guess it's not called that anymore. It's just called Queer Eye now. Yes, um, I love that show. <laughs> I do too. Uh, it's such a, a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, and in terms of playing, um, my boyfriend just got his son a VR headset for Aww. Christmas. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we've been playing that as well. I discovered that... Um, Certain VR games make me real sick. Uh, I tried playing the mm. Borderlands VR game. I That was not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. First oh, person God. shooters are really difficult for me for VR. Um, yeah. Depending on, depending on like the types of controls that you need. Like it's just it gets to be too much for me sometimes too. Yeah. And it's a real bummer because it's such a fun game. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it does make me quite ill. Um, I'm hoping maybe I can build up some tolerance to it. Um, and then I've also been playing Moss. Have you guys heard of that? Ooh. No. no I Wait, let me guess what it's about. Is mo You said Moth, right? No, Moss, like M-O-S-S. -S. Oh, dang. Okay. But I have no idea. <laughs> uh, it is like it won a bunch of awards for like vet best VR game of the year. And it is just this super delightful kind of like – you know, legend, um, Legends of Nim, Miyazaki-esque, like, oh. puzzle game where you play as this adorable little mouse, like, running <gasps> through the forest trying to save your community. I oh, love this. It's amazing. I highly recommend it if you have a VR headset. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Is this on, like, is this on um, like, PC VR? Uh, no, we've been playing it through PlayStation 4. Oh, okay. Bummer. I don't have a PlayStation 4. <laughs> yeah, sounds VR games too. also, they give me a little bit, like, a little bit of dizziness as well. Like, I know Beat Saber is a game that Bo likes to play, and oh, I've yeah. played it, like, once or twice, but I just get a little too nauseous, like, when I'm in there for more than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, VR, because VR is something that we very, very heavily use for our, what we call our poor, poor man's mocap for our VR mm -hmm. shorts. <laughs> um, yes. And so we use VR chat. 
And I I used to just exclusively be a camera person for that, which was easy because I could sit down and kind of be grounded. But I recently upgraded to an HTC Vive, which allows for full body motion capture. And so now I've been I've been standing up and having to walk around. And there's actually <laughs> there's a take. I won't give specifics, but there's a take in our upcoming short um, nondescript winter holiday um that the final take we used was me running across the camera and i accidentally ran like face first into my wall when we were filming it (laughs) yeah (laughs) but it's uh it was worth it because it looked really cool (laughs) oh my god i'm so sorry (laughs) no the The things we we do for art (laughs) yes the things we do for art um oh my god I've, I mean, VR chat's always something that I'm up to. I actually, and it's funny, I was just telling Katie this um, just mm-hmm. yesterday. I was looking for a new series to get into, like an anime series, and I've been yeah. seeing uh, posts about it on from Funimation's page on Facebook a lot lately, and so I started watching Plunderer yesterday, <gasps> and yes. I didn't even realize that you were in it until, until uh, Lynn first showed up, and I was just like, hold on. I feel like I feel like I recognize this voice and then I watched the you know I watched the credits and I was like oh man that's funny just like really weird timing that I I started watching it yesterday because I've been seeing really cute like gift sets on Tumblr from it and I love the like design of the main character um Hina with her blue hair and whatnot she Mm kind of reminds me of Chloe from Life is Strange Um, yeah and so especially with like the fading to purple so I was like huh who is this you look cool so mm-hmm. I oh, love yeah. that I think, show yeah. so much. Oh, uh, yeah. I will totally have to watch it. I think the main things that I've been doing are like Critical Role, of course. Mm-hmm. Like I watched the live stream last night. And then, of course, Ruby Volume 7. Yes. That was that's been a lot of fun. <laughs> and then, uh, yes, very much so. And I think those are like some of the main two things I've been keeping up with lately. I read a lot of manga, but in terms of like watching, like those are. Those have been very much on my radar, or listening, I guess, for Critical Role. I've been, right. uh, yeah, I've been giving <laughs> Katie shit um, the last, you know, week since the finale oh, for Volume yeah. Seven happened. Because, as I'm sure you heard, she voices several characters for us, Penny mm-hmm. and Cinder specifically. And mm-hmm. of course, me being, you know, our winter was like, oh man, can't believe winter's super relevant. Can't believe she's gonna become a mix. And then Penny just, and I'm just like, <laughs> yes. gee, Katie, how come you get to voice two maidens? I know, I was going to say, hogging all the maiden roles. I know, <laughs> in our silly little show, and now it's like Maiden's World. So now I am convinced that, just for my parody characters, that Weiss has to be the next maiden, and then <laughs> Velvet's going to have to come back. Velvet's going to have to come into this season and be a maiden somehow. Not allowed. You're limited to two, Katie. You're not allowed to have more than two. <laughs> oh, okay, sweet but, baby mm, Velvet. <laughs> I just, yes, there's so many great characters in the show, and I think that's one thing about Ruby that I've loved is each side character has really made me fall in love with them, and I wish that I could just see more of them, but that's why we have Ruby Chibi and all of those other little things so you can exactly. see what they're up to. God, I, I, I agree so with you, though. I, I get really attached to the side characters, and then I get kind of sad when, like, they move to a new area and those side characters aren't involved in the plot at that time anymore. God, that, yeah. was, that was me for Volume 3 with Winter, because, like, when, <laughs> when Volume 2 came out and, you know, I'd always had this, like, small headcanon because in Volume 1, you know, Weiss says, oh, I've always wanted bunk beds as a kid, and I was like, mm-hmm. I've never known many like single single kids you know kids who are, don't have siblings who wanted bunk beds it was always someone with a sibling and so yeah. i had like headcanoned that weiss had to have had siblings and then in mm-hmm. volume two they're like oh yeah your sister winter's here as well do you want to speak to her and i remember just being like who is this who is this this person this winter who is she i need to know about her and then mm-hmm. seeing her come in in volume three i was like holy shit this is the coolest character ever no pun intended um and then you know they they moved away and then of course there was the tease of you know having having winter show up in the volume five short and then you know thinking that she was going to come rescue weiss in uh in in, when she was captured by raven but i was just the second so many people were were so disappointed about that (laughs) yeah the second they were like we're going to atlas i'm like okay there is no excuse not to have winter now (laughs) out of excuses she has to come back so yeah, that was, yeah, that was 
that was a, a number of years that it was very hard for me to keep quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I imagine. <laughs> because, you know, uh, I, I knew when we recorded volume three, I didn't know the specifics of how Winter was going to be involved um, in future volumes. But Carrie and Miles, you know, did tell me that, you know, they would be going back to Atlas and that Winter would, you know, play a bigger part in like a later volume and you know that there was going to be a lot of like turmoil and and so forth yeah and so yeah it's like for years I had people you know being like when is winter coming back surely it's now surely it's now and I was like <laughs> oh god keep quiet keep the lips sealed I know yeah I remember last volume in, in volume six, they get to Argus and, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to go get our commanding officer. You know, we'll fetch her at once. And I remember because I do reactions to Ruby mm-hmm. and um, I remember just being like, oh, my God, it's happening. She's going to be here. And then they're like, Caroline Cordovan. And I'm just like, that's not winter. <laughs> that is not what a winter looks like. <laughs> I was like, unless she got a lot older and a lot shorter, I don't think that's winter. But it was, yeah, I I've, think it was mm-hmm. a wait absolutely worth like worth going through because I think your return in volume seven was the coolest thing ever. Oh, yes. thank you. I was I, very happy to see Winter come back. Like Weiss is obviously my my favorite character and like her relationship with Winter has been something that I've really loved seeing grow and develop. And so I'm very nervous about the future of their relationship based on some stuff that happened in volume seven. But I have a feeling that Winter's love for Weiss is going to prevail. <laughs> here's here's hoping. Here's hoping, of course, of course. But just like, God. Like, I guess one thing I'd want to ask, because you mentioned you could talk about just like your feelings about your character. Mm-hmm. How how do you feel about Winter's development this season? Um, It was so interesting and kind of heartbreaking to me but I loved like one of my favorite moments for me when we were recording um and when I was reading reading the scripts ahead of time was when Mm -hmm. when Winter is kind of trying to explain to Weiss that like you know basically her whole life it's always been other people directing her destiny and making decisions for her Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, Weiss is kind of questioning, like, well, why are you letting, you know, Ironwood, you know, force you to, you know, take on these powers? And Winter is kind of like, no, no, you don't get it. Like, I'm not I'm doing this for me. Like, this is yeah my decision. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's like this really beautiful apex of like Winter's kind of. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Maturation, her the the height of her maturity. Yeah, maturity. Mm-hmm. Um, because I do think with the Schnees specifically, like so much of their life um, has either been controlled by other people or the decisions that they've made have been reactionary against people, mm. which is also not fully taking control of your own destiny either. You know, like it may yeah. feel like it, but it's not. Um, mm-hmm. And so to kind of see Winter being a bit more at peace with and and sure of her own north, her own kind of moral compass, that was very yeah. gratifying for me. Um, yeah. And, and I am really curious to see how that is going to play out in future volumes because one of my favorite I, I was it Winston Churchill was he the one who said that quote like if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything mm-hmm. yeah and um I think you know previously earlier winter did come across as somebody to me who wasn't quite fully sure who she was yet um yeah. and I feel based on volume seven that she's grown a lot in that respect. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that either comes into alignment or creates conflict with what's going on. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I, and like, I think one of the, oh, sorry, you go ahead, Bo. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that, um, you know, the writers, the writing team for this volume did an amazing job at making Winter a very sympathetic character, making her very yes. relatable, but also mm-hmm. making her someone who, stays by her beliefs, who stays true to who she, you know, who she's deciding to be, who who she feels yes. is, you know, the person she is. And mm-hmm. 
it's it's really like you were, like you said it's really heartbreaking because you know there's there's moments where she's so she's so conflicted about her emotions and whatnot and the the yeah. irony that you know one you know one of the characters I know you said you can only really talk about um your character but uh Penny that how much she interacts with Penny you know the 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 robot struggling with a with a soul and Winter kind of the soldier who almost seems like she wishes she didn't have one sometimes yeah, yeah and, so that mm-hmm. was that one was something that I, that was a, a story just, that uh, I really loved the moment that just really broke my heart was when when winter had to call for reinforcements in that last episode of the season and was like, I'm giving you a head start to run because she's conflicted in her feelings of like being loyal to Ironwood, but also her loyalty to the ones that she loves. And so she still in the end made the decision to stay on Ironwood's side, but she still cares about her family and wanted them to escape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they constantly, I mean, they do this with all the characters, but they they really they're really liking putting her between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I was I was just like, "No, like go go with them." You know, like Baby. it's like but like I mean, I I personally, my own personal feelings about that scene and how like Winter kind of resonates with me. I feel like she didn't call for reinforcements because she was like betraying them i feel like weiss wouldn't have left unless she did you know like yeah. i think weiss was just too worried about her safety to oh my to go anywhere else and so by calling reinforcements she kind of forced weiss's hand forced her to to wow. run wow yeah that's but, a theory yeah that's that's my that's my personal feeling like I, you know i relate to i relate to the schneesters as i feel like all of us mm-hmm. affectionately call them um, <laughs> yes because of my own kind of res- estranged relationship with my younger sister um so seeing seeing that moment was really just like gut punch. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's very perceptive. Yeah, but. just their relationship is so beautiful. And it's one of the things that I always look forward to, like whenever we're getting a new episode is I want to see their development and especially Weiss's development and Winter's development with her father and like just all the family. Like Caitlin Glass nailed it oh, as Willow. Right? And just, yeah. yes. It was it was perfection and and I'm hoping we see more Atlas and more Shni and just more love and hardships, but you know, friendship and just everything that Ruby's about. I'm just ready to see more of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's <sighs> I'm I'm so I I'm really interested to see. I, I see it a lot in winter, but I see it in the other characters too, that 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 interplay and that struggle between doing what you perceive is better for the greater good versus the people that you care about that are immediately in front of you. Yes. So, uh, and, oh, yeah, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know there's so many emotions and everything. Feels. And yes, and it's going to probably be a minute before we get any more Ruby, but we are just going to be happily talking about as much as we can until we get there. But in the meantime, would you guys like to move to our Weiss Breakers? Yes. Absolutely. I love a <laughs> <Hooray>. good pun. <laughs> Da-da-da. Yeah, this podcast is very much paced on, or paced, based on puns and parody and silliness. And <laughs> a, a lot of our, a lot of our, like, terms that we have, you know, like Weiss Breaker, like, a lot of the, this podcast was actually kind of developed on the podcast itself when, when Katie it's asked true. me to, to co-host with her you know like what like eight nine months ago now practically yeah yeah um we really didn't know each other all that well we bonded at rtx last year Mm -hmm. and and you know our friendship has really honestly blossomed and and grown on the podcast itself from you know these answering these questions and getting to know each other and there was just one episode where i was like haha icebreaker you mean wisebreaker Wisebreaker. that became that became and a segment. legend was born. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the legendary legend. <laughs> and so one thing to know about the Weisbreakers, too, is that it's very rare that for all three of them, that all of us will agree, like, all the way down. We've only had that happen twice out of, like, the year's worth of episodes we've recorded. So Wow. All right. We want to we'll see. see if... If we can get all on the same page. I'm but, usually yeah. a rebel in the first one, so we'll see. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, would you rather 
have a pause button or a rewind button in your life? Ooh, okay, mm. so I'm going to go with pause. Yeah. And the the really type A kind of, uh, you know, person, the, the, the type A inner me wants the rewind button, but I feel like that's real dangerous. Yeah, um, that's a lot of power. <laughs> like maybe too much. Um, I already, you know, can get like stuck in like the minutia and, you know, God, when I first started doing voice acting and like editing VO auditions, like I could spend hours just obsessing over small details. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like rewind is dangerous and pause uh, fits more also with my kind of I have like a I call it a little bit of a slow brain in that it will sometimes take me a bit longer to decide what I want to say. But then when I say mm. it, it will usually come out like fully formed. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I like pause. Yeah, I think I would totally go pause as well. Like not only because the rewind button is too much power, like you could easily get too used to that. But pause just it gives you a minute to reflect. It gives you an extra moment to like consider something or to sit with something or maybe sleep in or if a <laughs> if a situation is happening and you feel overwhelmed instead of having the power to completely alter it you just kind of get that extra moment and i think that can be so valuable because god i i don't even want to think about cuz like human it's human nature to like once you get a little bit of power like you're going to go more and more into relying on it and just i think there's a lot less corruption that could happen with pausing would um, you, can I, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. No, oh, what's up? Go for it. Would you have different feelings if the rewind button was just an observational thing? Like if you could rewind, but you couldn't actually change the course of events? Ooh. See, you know, I honestly, oh, sorry, Bo, you go ahead. It's just, it's just funny because it's like, I would pick the rewind button. Of course, but, you would. Oh, <laughs> of course not, you would, Rebel though. <laughs> not for the whole go back and like, you know, you can't change anything because it's like the whole point of me getting the rewind button is so often I say something or do something and it's just like, no, why? Why would you say that? That's oh, so yeah. stupid. And oh, so I wish I could moments. just take back something I said or something that I did because it made me look like a fool. And the last thing I want to do is use a rewind button to go and experience it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. So. And to answer your question, Elizabeth, if I could rewind to just view experiences, I again think that would be too much power for me because yeah. I already obsess about the past enough. Right. And if I would just, if I was just going to remember a cringy moment in my life and I could actually go back and watch it and judge myself that well, like I think that would be terrible because one of the great things about humans is that as time goes on we do forget about those cringy moments in our life and other people do too and I want to forget <laughs> you know I'm gonna offer you a counter argument because I'm also really good at convincing people to come over to my side oh it's true it is your quirk <laughs> is why why use the rewind button to go back and view mistakes you could use it to go back and relive fond memories too but no that is true but the value of that doesn't outweigh the potential of abuse that I would do for the negative <laughs> times because like I would just I would just be sitting there sulking like oh god I said I said something stupid to Carly Rae Jepsen one time I don't know and I would just start thinking about it and then I would just sit there for an hour versus like the good stuff that would actually also be too much power because then you just want to live in that memory and never do something new because you're like this was a good time I'm just gonna sit here and think about this yeah I think I'm coming from it from more um I mean those are extreme situations of course yeah. but I'm just trying to, th I'm, to I'm think of the worst it, case scenario know, we, we get we get real on this podcast I, I'm mm -hmm. kind of coming oh, at yeah. it from an angle of um, I was in a really bad car accident right after my mom died, and mm -hmm. the you know the, oh, that's a the one theory, two punch. Yeah, the mm -hmm. the theory. And my dad was not having a good time at that time. <laughs> um, yeah. But the theory was that one of the reasons why I have so much trouble remembering her specifically is because I had been like she was at the forefront of my mind. Like this was like literally like three four weeks after she died. Mm -hmm. And I, my, my head went through a windshield and I suffered like Oof. memory loss. 
Oh my and gosh. so it's it's kind of one of those it's it's selfish i know but like i would love to be able to actually remember some things about her more than what i have because like right. the, yeah. the last the last like few months that she was around are really fuzzy for me so i think the only situation where i would take a rewind button is if you could only use it once a day hmm. like if it's limited so, like, you can't just rely on it. You can't just sit there all day and, like, do that. Like, mm-hmm. if it was maybe you have one rewind that is, like, an hour or five minutes out of a day. So, like, you can change maybe one thing. And they don't stack on each other. They reset. Like, that <laughs> might be a situation. That's fair. Yeah. Well, well guess I'm for this first white breaker, Yeah. You are you are the rebel child here. I, I tried as per usual. I tried to roll that <laughs> charisma check, but it failed. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Let's go to our next wife breaker. So, would you rather wake up with a different hair color once a month, or wake up in a strange place once a year? In both situations, you will poof back to normal at the end of the day, or in the place situation, you would poof back to your home. Ooh. So. That immediately just makes me think of, like, the time traveler's wife. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And, like, all the dangers inherent of being poofed into a place that you don't know and aren't expecting. So. Yeah. Oh, I mean, would I love to be able to visit a lot of different places for free, basically? Yes. But it seems very dangerous. Whereas, like, having a different hair color... As an actor who does on-camera work, that might create some problems for that day, but it seems like it would also be really fun. Yeah. Hey, guys, I can't come into work today. Uh, I've got pink hair. (laughs) I've got pink hair. It's a disease that's just for me. I'm a a main character today. Sorry. (laughs) Just give me 24 hours. I'll be back. Yeah, it'll be fine. Although there is the the timing difference because the hair thing is once a month. The strange place is once a year. So Yeah, and you do get poof back to safety no matter what at the end of the day. But, you know, a lot can happen in 24 hours. So, like, what if you're in the middle of a jungle? There's a lion. Like, oh, sure. Wow. You're right. <laughs> or, you know, what if you what if it's like I'm in Austin and it's the middle of summer and I'm in tank tops and shorts and, Ooh, yeah. you know, I get poofed to the Antarctic for a day? Oh, my like, gosh. Yeah. I would die. I you would die. Yeah. Me. I think I'm going to go hair color. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like it's a fun idea. There would have to be a few more specifics to make the place thing worth it. Like if you could plan for it, like, OK, once a year, maybe the day before it's going to like beep in your head like, hey, we're about to do this. So then you can just like be like put as many yourself. layers on as you can. <laughs> yeah, like grab a gun, coat. grab a baseball bat. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then just like, OK, we're going to see what happens. But yeah, I would. I would definitely go hair color as well, because that's like that's a fun, silly thing that you can have in your life, but also won't kill you. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. One hundred percent. OK, well, we all agreed on the second one. Yeah. So let's see if we can get. Yes. Round of applause. Round of applause. Ooh. Let's see if for our third one, we can all agree. Would you rather be the absolute best at something no one takes seriously or be average at something well respected? I'm already the best at being me, and no one takes me seriously. <laughs> oh, bah, 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 bah. Mood. <laughs> I have uh, to admit, uh, the cynical artist in me kind of thought like a little bit of the same thing, where I was like, <laughs> I mean, lots of people don't take the art seriously, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, it's true. But I, as I mentioned before, I'm I'm pretty type A. Uh, and, yeah. uh, I, I don't think that I could like stand just being, uh, like mediocre at something that I really cared about. Oh uh, yeah. So I think for my own sanity, I would have to pick really good at something nobody else cared about. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cause I think I'm in that same boat too. And that like, What's important is not other people taking it seriously in a sense. It's about how you feel about it. And I would want to feel like I'm doing my best. And so even if no one else takes my knitting seriously, gosh darn it, I'm going to be the best knitter ever. (laughs) You know, and just because they don't take it seriously doesn't mean that 
that they dislike what you're doing or something like yeah, that. Because, yeah, yeah. Like, they're just like, if you're oh, like there's Katie. the best knitter out there, right? People are going to oh, yeah. appreciate having a well knitted sweater when it's cold. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like, like it's nice. They just like might knitting's not take one you example, seriously. but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like psh, you want to be a professional knitter, Katie? Dream on. Like, oh, you'll see. <laughs> I'll be the best knitter. <laughs> Oh I love my that gosh. idea. Yeah, I don't, I honestly, it, I'm going to add a second part to this it, other than, okay. you know, Katie's knitting thing, but like, <laughs> what, what would you, Elizabeth, what would you be good if you could pick something, just knee jerk answer, something good that you don't think people would take seriously, what would you do? Oh my gosh. Uh, something that I could be good at that people wouldn't take seriously. Ooh. It's a really good question. <laughs> playing playing like the trombone or like an oboe, like that's, something that's, that's, that's serious though, because it's part of the orchestra. I, feel like, I like, feel like people would take that true. seriously. Um, yeah, like flower arranging. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> that's fair. That's or fair. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of another another good one. Um. Yeah, I'm going to go with flower arranging unless I suddenly blurt something else out in the middle of another question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that's totally fair. Which has yeah, been known to happen. Like, yeah. Because, like, there's so many types of people in the world that are good at different things. And, like, the idea of no one taking it seriously shouldn't matter. But it is sometimes important to get feedback or, like, have a community of people that also like what you do because you want to be taken seriously. But, oh, like, yeah. it's okay to just have hobbies that aren't, like, your main source of income. Like, we get – I am definitely guilty of this, of being too, like – like everything I do sometimes has to somehow be taking me closer to something else. And it's, like, sometimes it's just nice to, I don't know, draw a picture and it's, like, it's really cool, but you're not going to, like, just – it's not, like, everything. Yeah. Like it's okay Do to just have things that you like. Purely for the pleasure of it. <laughs> yeah. You know? And if you're the best, yeah. I think I'm going to change my answer because I thought about it. Uh-oh. Okay. I really wish I could draw. I tried to draw Aww. Winter the other day, and it was not a pretty picture. Aww. And Aww. It, it was something, because I used to draw, um, and I don't know what happened I just I it was one of those I didn't have enough time in high school and so I had to pick between like singing acting and like drawing and I mm -hmm, chose singing uh -huh. and acting um and so you know unfortunately did not pursue you know being an artist in the 2d sense but um I think I would yeah I wouldn't mind being average at drawing like there are plenty of okay. there are plenty of positions that you don't necessarily have to be you know a, an amazing artist at and even then like art is up for interpretation so yeah so true it doesn't you know you could you could draw you know you could draw something that looks super abstract and it's like well if you were trying to draw a person it's not the <laughs> best person but <laughs> it's really artistic so it's a really great looking duck <laughs> <laughs> I am with I you on that though. I've always I've always wished that I was better at drawing than I am because I am not good at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can draw like an eye, <laughs> a single eye, <laughs> a singular eye. Yes, I can't draw the other one. I it is I can do lettering. So bad. I can't do like and I can do Ooh. like inanimate objects, but like people. That's that's what I've always wanted to be able to do is draw people and I just I can't I can't do Ooh. it. <laughs> I would really love to be good at, like, old-timey calligraphy. Like, you know, oh, get, like, yeah. a wax seal, make a letter. Like, nobody would care. But I would just be so happy if I could, like, write a ye old letter to my friend, like, inviting them to a tea party or something. I would care, Katie. I know. You would care. No one else would care. <laughs> it's okay. But no one takes me seriously, so it works. <laughs> there you go. So it's fine. It balances out. Like, because I actually love, like, the wax seal stuff. And once I saw, bring it back to Ruby, that, like, the schneeze had, like, that that um, that um seal on the letters, I was like, oh, I, I want that knew, color wax. I never <laughs> knew that I needed the, the Schneeders Company wax seal. Like, I know. So like, much. If, okay, uh, Rooster Teeth. If if you're out there, this is the merch we crave. <laughs> Wax seals. <laughs> I like, actually do have thing? like. Bring it back. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I have a notepad set that's like a pen and like paper that has like Schnee Dust Company written on it. Someone Aww. gave it to me. I don't know who. It's really cute. And I've, I've used the pen a few times and I'd be like, teehee, I'm writing with Schnee Dust Company merch. <laughs> like this is... That's sell that's, this. That's me every time. Every time I use the Schneebucks cup, though, like yes. oh, yeah, yes. I love so my Schneebucks cup. Still, by the way, just FYI. Oh my gosh! That's <laughs> oh my gosh! We've, we've we made were it, so happy with those cups. We, we've made it our goal. Uh, every time we're going, we go to a convention where we know a Ruby voice actor is going to be at. We we sneak them a Schneebucks cup. Our most recent one was we got a uh, Christina Christina v, v at ALA. Yeah, nice. and she's Robin Hill this year. So we're yes. just like, here you go. Welcome to the the Schneebucks family here. <laughs> <laughs> fight so, the good fight, guys. Fight the yep, good fight. Yes. <laughs> yep. We're exactly. slowly, slowly just subliminal messaging, pushing the Schneebucks cups out there. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe someday. <laughs> well, all right. So for this last Weissbreaker, uh, Bo was the odd one out again, I think. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So we've got a two to one. Surprise. Maybe next one. time. <laughs> It's but you fair. know what? It's fine. Our differences are the spice of life. <gasps> it's true. And that's actually kind of like one of the fun parts about doing the Weissbreakers is you never know what someone will say. And we like to, um, if the audience members like to, we'd love to see you guys answer them because we always read the comments. And mm-hmm. I would actually not mind putting a segment into the show where like we just read some audience answers because I've seen some interesting ones. Oh, yeah, definitely. This this last one, the, the last two. Um, so... Katie and I, we just had every other episode we have a guest on now. And mm-hmm. so our previous guest was Lauren Landa. And yes. Oh, I love yeah. Lauren. She's yeah. so sweet. And yeah, she was at mm-hmm. she was at ALA and she she swung by and, and recorded with us and that was super cool. Um but you know, seeing people's like they're answering questions on the comments. They've been really, really kind of responsive. You know, this this season because we're technically on the second season now of Perpetually Ajar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just always excited to see what whenever I like refresh the video, it's like, ooh, it was at 15 comments and now it's at like 23. What the heck? <laughs> so. Huh? Yeah, because like people fun. just like to answer silly questions. That's what I like about this podcast is it's just a fun place to just learn some silly stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Then let us get to our winter view questions. But we used to call it. It used to be called interrogation, like we're interrogating you. But like, ooh, yeah. But I like winter view just. I know. Winterview does flow better, though. Bo actually recommended Winterview over Winterrogation, I think. Yeah. Which... I can understand that it does sound a little bit more inviting. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. Hmm, win- For Winter's character, though, <laughs> she would totally be a Winterrogator and not a Winterviewer, though. Yeah, like... that's fair. <laughs> that is fair. She'd be like the, where were you on? You where know? are they? <laughs> <laughs> so, Katie, oh, you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, I can go first, sure. All right. So, mm, excuse me. What is your go-to stress reliever? Um, it can be a food or an activity. Like Elizabeth, what helps you unwind? Oh goodness. Um, you know, in all honesty, it's probably being around my friends. Um, Aww. yeah. Yeah, I am a very. It's funny. I'm. I am in, I believe it's called an extroverted introvert uh, in mm, that like mm-hmm. I I do tend to need alone time to kind of recharge my batteries, but um, I'm very community oriented. My friends are really yeah. important to me and um, I, I kind of specifically carve out time every month from my schedule to make sure that I'm like you know, checking in with friends via phone or making, you know, dates to get coffee or hang out. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I do, as the third time I've mentioned, I'm very type A. And I think that like being alone and doing a lot of work alone allows me to kind of sink deeper into that. But when I get around my friends who kind of bring out like my sillier side, like that's what makes me feel like light and Uh, less stressed for sure yeah that is a beautiful answer I kind of feel the same way I'm I think I identify a little bit as an extroverted introvert as well because I do need my alone time but Mm -hmm. whenever I'm like in a public space I feel the most like 
myself, I guess, when I'm around people or a community or like, you know, crewby people, like mm-hmm. people that I can really feel I can just have fun with. Like those are my favorite moments in life. And so that's yeah. a, yeah, that's a very beautiful answer. Oh, thanks. I am very, very introverted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, it, it's not necessarily that I'm like uncomfortable around like crowds or around extroverts yeah. or anything like that. I just prefer to be like, and I love talking to people. Like I'm, you know, I basically eat, sleep, breathe discord because, you know, we have our server yeah. and everything. And so I, I love being able to communicate with people and talk to people, but I like that there's the disconnect, you know, where it's mm-hmm. like if yeah. if I need to step away and have, you know, just absolute alone time, there's that leave call button right there. You know, like I can just be like, hey, yeah. guys, I'm, I'm bouncing. I'm really tired or I'm just kind of overstimulated. I'm going to leave. But yeah, I do also it does get to a point where, you know, like I really do miss because unfortunately, like ever since I moved because I used to live in Anaheim and now I'm in Long Beach and it's just far enough to where it's like a lot of my friends. It's just kind of like, oh, yeah, you're really far away now. We can't really hang out because it's like work or school or whatever. And mm-hmm. so the only real time that I'm getting to hang out with any friends are at conventions And so, but I feel like it kind of works out really nicely because conventions can kind of be very overstimulating at times. Oh, yeah. But so I basically feel like I build up this reserve of extrovert energy and then it just gets all (laughs) expelled at a convention. And then when I come home, it's like, okay, time to save up for the next one. (laughs) Yes. I like the phrasing of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so so true. I feel like I'm still recovering from ALA. I'm saving up for Planet Comic Con. It's going to happen all at Planet Comic Con, and then I'm going to be saving up for RTX again. <laughs> That's just how uh, it works for me. I love Planet Comic Con. Yeah, I was I'm, there th- three years in a row. I'm all, like, of course I can't go back a fourth year, but I'm almost a little bummed. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really, Aww. I'm really excited. There's a, there's a few of us that are heading to, to Planet Comic Con this year, and I don't mm-hmm. think any of us that are going have been. So it's kind of new and exciting and all that. So it's a very well run show. So awesome. Yeah, I've heard. I'm looking forward to it then. Well, heck yeah, Bo. Would you like to go to your winch of you question? No. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening, guys. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Um, there's that leave call button. Goodbye. Um, so what for for both of you, obviously, what is your guilty pleasure movie to watch? What what is your like go to movie where you're just like, you know what? I need to just this is this is the movie that I know will never cease to to make me happy or put a smile on my face. Like my mine's Ooh. Wizard of Oz. So oh i was obsessed with that movie when i was uh little i would watch it back to back to back and my dad said that i knew like every single line that every single character said (laughs) yeah my my dad used to tell me that i would do i have no memory of it obviously but when i was little he said when um if i only had a brain came on i would like stand in front of the tv and do like the whole dance routine Mm -hmm. so I was just I've Aww. I've always I've always loved the story of the Wizard of Oz, the books, the movie, you know, uh, Wicked. Obviously, like Wicked is a huge part of my life too. Um, mm-hmm. Does it have to be a movie? Can it be a show? Sure, any kind of like media that you sit down to watch. Okay, then I guess for mine, real quick, I don't necessarily feel like full on guilty, but I don't think this show has one hundred percent aged well like there's parts of it that I'm like yeesh and I look at a little differently but every time I sit down and watch it I still get those like butterfly feelings and it's friends like Mm. I love watching friends any time it's on like or watching it on repeat it always brings a smile to my face even though when I watch it now versus when I was like 14 like there's some jokes and there's some like characters that I don't vibe as well with anymore but Mm. I still get that like feeling of like nostalgia I guess when I watch it I have a confession to make Uh oh I have never seen a single episode of Friends in my life whoa I'm wearing (laughs) a Central Perk shirt right now That's great. You need to. You, I we, have a problem. We need to get you. Uh, we need to get you like set up with um uh the thing that Lauren does. The how have you not seen 
you know, and then yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. she like it's... shames her friends because they haven't seen things. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I I grew like growing up, my family we had a TV, but we didn't have cable. Yeah, and mm, yeah. I didn't get cable until until I went off to college. So oh, wow, there was yeah. just like a lot of stuff that I totally missed, <laughs> particularly yeah, yeah. in the TV realm. Um, but okay, what is my okay? I mean, I have different things. Like I have certain movies that never fail to bring like a smile to my face. But if we're looking yeah. at like true guilty pleasures, um. One of my top guilty pleasures is uh, putting on reruns of uh, America's Next Top Model. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like what you said. Like, I really don't relish a lot of the, like, made up drama, like, that you can tell that the producers yeah, were yeah. just pushing. But yeah, on the same token, like... There's just so much reality TV goodness going on there in like, yeah. you know, like 18 year old girls. Some of them have probably never like spent a night, you know, more than a night away from home before. Yeah. And um, I actually really do enjoy like, uh, you know, the photo shoots that they do and, and yeah. seeing how they, you know, the how they turn out and stuff. So, yeah, like seeing the outfits like I think. Is America's Next Top Model, or is there, is there another show where it's about, like, you have to make a full outfit, and then you have a model that models it, but it's about the that's people making the That's Project Runway. Outfits. Project Runway. Okay, that's the one that I do. Oh, yeah. Project Runway and is they great. They also do the drama. Yeah. I used to watch, um, what was it, Face Off? Oh, yeah. Oh, that, the like, makeup, makeup one. Yeah, because yeah. it was, like, it was when I was first getting into cosplay. And I was just oh, obsessed yeah. with it because I can't do my makeup. Like I'm if it's I can do stage makeup, like stuff that's meant to be seen from a yeah. distance, but mm -hmm. not like, oh, I need to look nice makeup. <laughs> I can look nice <laughs> from a distance, but not up close. You look nice. <laughs> Shush. Um, no you. Uh no you. <laughs> I think, yeah, I really liked I really liked face off. I think uh, other than uh, you know, I, I realized that I didn't even meet my own definition of guilty pleasure. If I had to pick something that's a guilty pleasure of mine to watch that's not a movie, I get sucked into the weird, like, 15 gadgets you didn't know could work on your phone videos on YouTube. <laughs> like, yes. But I'm, I, I enjoy watching them so much because there's so, like, not a single video goes by where I don't go, huh. I would have never <laughs> thought about that being an accessory for a cell phone. <laughs> That's and then great. do you remember any of them like 30 minutes later? <laughs> you know, I do because I've definitely bought things because they got oh. recommended off of those videos. Those are like infomercials for me. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just I don't know what it is about them. It's I blame my parents because they they used to sit me in front of the TV when they had to do like dishes or cook dinner. They'd put me in my like car seat. Uh, with like my back turned to the TV and they'd put like infomercials <laughs> on to like trick me into thinking that people were talking to me. And oh my so God. that way I didn't feel like I'd get upset because, you know, I would I thought people were talking to me and giving me attention. <laughs> and so I, oh I blame gosh. I blame them because that's I feel like I feel like that's the the source that's such a of my obsession story. with these infomercials and these YouTube videos. <laughs> Because, yeah, movies and stuff, like, I don't watch a crazy amount of movies. I watch more series and shows now. Mm -hmm. Like, I still go and see movies, but, like, if I'm going to pay to go see a movie, like, yeah, I probably hope that I'll like it. Like, I saw Jojo Rabbit recently. It was really good. Ooh, like That's on my to-watch list. Oh, yeah. It is it is everything. Highly recommend. If, if, but, yeah, there's more shows that I play. Yeah. I will there's... say. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 you go. You're fine. I was going to say, one of, one of my, I do have, a, I do have some guilty pleasure movies. Um, one of my favorites is Ever After. Ooh. Have you guys seen I that? I have heard of that. A long it's, time ago. Yeah. Oh, no, it's old. It's from the 90s. It's, uh, it's mm. Drew Barrymore, like a Drew Barrymore oh. Cinderella story. Oh wow! But Have it's I seen in, that? but it's I think it's actually really well done for what it is because I think she makes a mm -hmm. great Cinderella, and Angelica Houston is the evil stepmother, 
And oh. uh, I forget the name of the the actress that plays um, the kind of bitchy uh, stepsister. Uh, she's mm-hmm. fantastic. I'm pretty sure she's a British actress. Anyway, it's I highly recommend it. I actually think it's really good. And it's got like a great combination of like, you know, that awesome like you know period feel plus yeah. humor plus romance Ugh, i don't know it, any it makes of those like old good. movies too like any disney remake of like like for example there was a movie called a cinderella story where they would try to make a modern cinderella and i actually liked those movies growing up and there's a lot of disney channel original movies that i very much enjoy watching but for not maybe the right reasons. I enjoy them because of like the nostalgia and like the quirky, silly, weird jokes of that time that I enjoy like re-experiencing in that way. Like Hannah Montana, for example, like I unironically, if today, if Miley Cyrus wasn't, you know, different, I guess, like I support her career and doing what she wants to do, but I liked Hannah Montana. And if she was still doing concerts today, I would go. That'd be fun. (laughs) That would be so fun. Like, like, unironically, I, I would just go sing The Best of Both Worlds at I, a Hannah Montana concert. I have to agree. I loved Hannah Montana. My mom and I used to, like, religiously watch <laughs> yes! Hannah Montana Aww. when it was coming out. <laughs> it's just wholesome and silly and weird. And, like, it's from a time in your life, to Like, that nostalgia button can definitely play oh, a yeah. part. But sometimes it's just you just want that, that feeling. And mm-hmm. sometimes you just got to watch something that gives you that feeling. Yep. I agree. Mm-hmm. So, Katie, would you like to to go with your, your yes. second question? I very much would. Thank you, Bo. So for our next winter view question, um, what is a piece of advice someone gave you that has stuck with you and how has it helped you? This can be general advice. It can be career advice. Just something that maybe the first piece of advice that comes to your mind, like that applies to maybe anywhere in life. Hmm. I'd have to say. Well, and I talked a great to- question. I talked about mm-hmm. her, um, I don't think it was this last episode. I want to say it was, it might have been the episode with Lauren. Um, but um, my mentor when I worked at Disneyland, uh, Jenica, yeah. she, um, one of the first things she told me when she pulled me aside and saw that I was really struggling with, with just doing my job was just to stop taking things so personally. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's something that anyone could have really told me and whatnot, but she was the first person that said it. Because it was just, I was, like, having this, like, nervous breakdown because a guest had yelled at me and, like, it hurt my feelings and I was really just, it was, like, my first couple weeks of working at the park. Yeah. And she pulled me aside and she just, she, you know, at first she was, of course, she was like, you know, are you okay? Like, did, you know, did they verbally assault you? Did they physically assault you? You know, going through the whole, like, are you doing okay? And I was just kind of like, no, they hurt my feelings. And she just kind of looked <laughs> yeah. at me and just went, stop taking things so personally. And it just really kind of like hit me of like, yeah, like right. you needed to hear it at that time. Like yeah. that was the time you needed to hear it. Yeah. yeah. And that's just, that's something like, it's something I still struggle with, but I always, whenever I get to a point of feeling like I'm yeah. being personally attacked by someone, I just hear her voice with that, like, stop yeah. taking things so personally, because it's, it really, it really did strike a chord with me. And it's, it's stuck with me ever since, you know, like seven years mm-hmm. later, practically. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to cheat a little bit and say two, because um, one is for personal life and one is for career um, okay. And in all honesty, I, I don't think I could remember the exact quote, but I remember when I was younger, my mom saying something to me to the, the effect of like, the only person you have to live with is yourself. And yeah. ultimately, whatever you do in life, you need to make sure that you can live with yourself and that you're happy with yourself. And yes. Mm-hmm. It, it's one of those things where it sounds so simple and it certainly took me a number of years to like really get what that truly meant. Um, yeah. But it's been like a wonderful like kind of guiding compass for me in the decisions that I make because I'm a people pleaser for sure. And I've had to struggle yeah. against that for most of my life. Um, and And just using that as your rubric like – Like, it doesn't matter what person A, B, C thinks. It doesn't even matter what your boss thinks. Like, ultimately, you got to do what's going to make you okay with yourself. Yes. Um, 
So that was one big one for me in my personal life. And in my professional life, um, one of the first animes that I ever worked on, I think it was maybe the second one I ever worked on, was Ghost in the Shell Arise. And Mm -hmm. the director for that, um, he's now a producer at Funimation, but at the time he was directing, his name's uh, Zach Bolton. And uh, he basically said something along the lines of like, be good at your job and don't be an asshole and you will always work. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, I know that again, probably sounds so simple, but it. It's been such good advice, particularly the don't be an asshole part. Um, Mm -hmm, Not that I think that I I don't think I am prone to being an asshole because I'm a people pleaser. (laughs) But (laughs) um, I see that so much like time and time again in our industry that like being nice can make all the difference in the world. Like both for whether or not you get hired again, whether or not, you know, I want to hire somebody or work with somebody again. Like being talented is important, but being nice is almost even more important. (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of almost like the you'll catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Uh Yeah. 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 But also, like, there's just no reason to be an asshole. Like, most of the time, it's, like, it's free to just be a good person. It makes you feel good. It makes others feel good. Like, it's just, it's logical to just not be an asshole. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I've been, what I've been saying is it's, like, it costs you zero dollars to be a decent human being. Like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But it's it's so easier 100. said than done sometimes. I think everyone, even no matter how how much you try, it's it's so easy. Yeah. Like it's one of those. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you, a situation that you don't enjoy, that you're not happy about, that you could have easily avoided by just being an asshole? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's so hard not to just kind of fall back on that and just be like, yeah. No, fuck but off. it's also and, important to know. know that setting boundaries, setting boundaries, does not make you an asshole. If you oh, have to absolutely. stand up for your boundaries, if you have to, if you have to say something that could be interpreted as rude, but someone is you know attacking you or doing something to you that is not okay having boundaries and setting those boundaries is not making you an asshole yeah no i mean like deliberately being malicious like like, yes yeah you you have to have tact like i think i saw a quote recently and it was kind of like um honesty without tact is cruelty so like you have to know how to like you know, present yourself, present your feelings, or tell someone something, whether it's harsh news or good news, but also have that emotional intelligence as well. And sometimes a lot of behavior that can be read as rude or asshole-ish is just that that person doesn't have certain social skills. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not that what they're saying is wrong necessarily, but if you don't say it with tact, then you're going to be wrong. You're going to be the asshole. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the advice that, like that actually really helped me is a quote about um, just about like when you're in rough times, this too shall pass Mm -hmm. like, and nothing is permanent. So anytime you are experiencing a heightened sense of negative emotions, like accepting that negative emotions are 100% a normal and regular part of life, Mm -hmm. just as positive emotions are a regular, normal part of life. You will experience both. They will always be experienced but they will never last like longer than the other in that sense like like when you're feeling down right now you will feel happy again logically it will happen one day but for right now you have to feel this Mm -hmm. and then when you're happy like you're gonna feel sad again it's it's okay this too shall pass it's like a hopeful way of looking at that that no matter what situation you're in things are always changing and that can be scary but that's also good you want things to change and keep growing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep i agree and that that helps me yeah yeah i have i have like not a whole lot of people have necessarily given i mean people i feel like people give advice like on a daily basis but as far as like advice that's like life-changing i feel like there's a lot more like instances of i've come across quotes that have really resonated with me you know yeah oh yeah and uh, yeah. of course, you know, I've also I've also had, you know, I have some pretty, 
pretty profound people in my life that have said very similar things as well. So it's kind of one of yeah. those. It's just I, I kind of associate them with with the quote as well, you know. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of it, too, is like when in your life it's introduced to you, like whether you're mm-hmm. in a place where you are open and able to like receive it, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like sometimes timing or the right person can mm-hmm. really affect your change. Yeah. Well, that was a beautiful little question answer right there. Mo, do you want to take us to our last interview question? Yeah, and uh, this could go one of two ways, so we'll see. Um, but <laughs> my my last interview question is: Do you collect anything, and if so, what is it? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I collect dollar dollar bills, y'all. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dragon. I'm hoarding my gold. <laughs> I wish. Man, that's a mood. Yeah. <laughs> um so my my instinct is to say no because I am I'm not a collector in the traditional sense. Um like mm-hmm. I don't collect uh you know Funko Pops or 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 figurines or yeah or anything like that, but I do I I love reading and I love books and I love physical copies of books. And yeah. so I do end up kind of collecting like my favorite, you know, fantasy series and, you know, authors and stuff. So I suppose in mm-hmm. a way I'd say I collect books. And then I also I I can be a bit of a product junkie. Um, oh, yeah. And I have totally figured out how best to, like, work the Sephora system so that you get, like, the maximum number of, like, free samples with every order. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. And I, like, I just, I get this thrill out of, like getting free samples of beauty products whether it's makeup or skincare or whatever so I guess you could say I'm a collector of of uh of beauty products in that sense (laughs) okay yeah that yeah that would classify I think like growing up I was very much a collector I've slowed down a little bit but like I used to collect neopets Whenever I would have um, my subscription of Shonen Jump, when they would send physical copies, I still have every copy of Shonen Jump that was printed. I wow. have there's only there's only two missing from my collection, and I actually I want to complete it. It's like I got rid of all the Neopets, I got rid of a lot of stuff I collected growing up, but my Shonen Jumps were like very important to me because it was like at a time in my life where I was just getting into nerd stuff. So like those physical copies of like essentially a place where I first got to read manga like were very were very like important to me and they don't take up way too much space like they're actually like they only take up maybe like two shelves because they didn't they stopped printing a while back and then they went to online so I have that so yeah I think the only two things I collect would be shonen jumps and then currently whenever I'm at a convention and I see an artist that has a really cute like little pin Mm -hmm. or something I love to get pins. Oh, mm-hmm. and I guess technically I like stickers as well. Like tiny little like things that I can put on stuff. Like I like I like collecting those. <laughs> I you know, I, I do collect so I have like two two kind of answers. One, it's funny that you mentioned Funko Pops because I do collect Funko Pops. Mm-hmm. That is a huge <laughs> it used to be a bigger Aww. problem for me than it is now. Um because moving yeah. I didn't have a means of transporting all of said Funko Pops. <laughs> yeah, they're so, big. Yeah, they're they become awkward to um and I keep them like in the box. Like the box has to be in perfect condition and everything like right. that. Oh, definitely. But um I've I've refined it down to I specifically only collect Funko's like, I don't try to complete an entire series. I specifically go for Funkos of characters that have influenced me positively. Right. Um, not necessarily okay. just, oh, this is my favorite character from this franchise. I'm going to get it. It's like, I, you know, I, it has to have some kind of emotional connection for me. Um, yes. So now, you know, I'm down to, I used to have easily probably like 500 Funkos. Like, oh, my oh, God. Wow. Yeah. Goodness. Wow. Ridiculous, like ridiculous amount and some of the Funkos that I had had because I'd been collecting for so long were were worth some money 
like one of my favorite ones that I still have, which, you know, makes sense because Wizard of Oz is um, I got it when it first came out was the Wicked Witch of the West. And I only paid oh, like wow. $12 for her and she's worth like wow. three four hundred dollars now. Oh, yeah wow. because yeah because she's she's they don't make her anymore and so like little things like that and kind of seeing how how sometimes they 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 go up and down in rarity and whatnot is is really interesting mm-hmm. to me so that's kind of the the specific item but something that I've started doing in the last couple years is whenever I go to a convention that really is one that stands out to me one that like that is like for the memory books like just something really cool happens or I just overall have a really really good time I I try to get it doesn't have to be the same thing but I try to get something that I can kind of that I can keep from that convention and attach those memories to you know on that note I actually forgot one other thing I collect that I've been collecting since my first anime convention. Mm. I have kept every single badge from cons, <laughs> like, and they're all on a corkboard. I have, since I was 12 years old, gone to more than like 60 conventions. Wow. And so I have like a corkboard of all of them like pinned up. So every time I get a new badge, I never throw it away. So yeah, I guess I am a very much collector. <laughs> but yeah, I collect I collect badges too. Actually, now that you mention it, but um, yeah, my my thing that I've since you know we started doing Kruby is I've been going back and finding like the first time I went to the convention. So I went back and found my very first anime Los Angeles badge, right? And it was just yeah. you know Friday one day badge. And then I got uh, one from like five years ago at, that was just general full weekend. And then last yeah. year that said professional. And then this year we had the, you know, opportunity to be there as guests. And so showing the progression of like how yeah. I've kind of gone oh, that's through. that's so cool. Yeah. And so that's that's something that I've started doing too. But usually it's, it's like prints. Uh, I'll usually try to limit myself. I definitely splurged on prints at ALA this year. I got nothing but Fire Emblem <laughs> Three Houses prints. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um all Edelgard, my favorite character. I just I love supporting the artists in the artist alley, which yeah. is why I like to get tiny things that I can use to decorate. So like whether it's a sticker or like a pin, like something that's supporting like an artist out there that that's how they make their living. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like a big company selling anime stuff, which you know, no disrespect to them, I guess, but I like supporting like the local artists. And then I just have all these pins and I want to put them on like a jean jacket or something just so I can like show them like I, I love pins. Yeah. yeah. And I also got, you know, I've got my, because conventions, uh, getting prints, I've also got, like, my, my autograph prints from, you know, all the different people, voice oh, yeah. actors, any kind of industry person that's got anything that I can get them to sign. I try to, I try to support them when I'm able to just because it's, I that's what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to, you know, look back and be like, man, remember when you were the one, you know, going around and, you know, paying for autographs and now people are doing it for you? That's kind of what I want to do. I want to. <laughs> I want to go through that journey and and support as many people as I can along the way. Mm-hmm. So for sure, yeah. Well, we have our um, final segment, the fan submitted question. Before we wrap things up, would you like to ask the fan submitted question, Boo? Sure, why not? So, Ha-ha. our fan submitted question, cycling it all the way back to the beginning. Yes. If you had your own original semblance in the Ruby universe, what would your semblance be called? And that's from Evan Hunter Gale. Ooh. I already oh have gosh. an answer because I have a Ruby yeah. OC. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. That's like, that's a really deep and complex question to answer I mean because then I have to think about like what would my personal like what would Elizabeth Maxwell's semblance be I mean I guess one thing if you if you can't necessarily name it I think an acceptable answer would be if you could have any kind of semblance what would you have or like describe it describe something that you think would be like a cool like in-universe power for you maybe uh hmm well okay just going off the top of my head um I have always been um, a big believer in kind of like the power of your own will and, you know, the idea of like when you put something out into the universe and you get really specific with what you want, 
that, you know, that allows, you know, more abundance to to come your way. And, yeah. um, you know, I don't know that much about what was that book, The Secret. I never read it. But, you know, the idea of like the law of attraction and just uh, the ability of like, you know, one person to, you know, use their will alone to like bend uh, the universe to what they want. So I'm not quite sure how exactly that would translate into a semblance. Um, But yeah, the idea of being able to like want something or visualize something hard enough that you could influence like Mm. events or, or how things, you know, were to turn out. Um, obviously not like fully the ability to like control the outcome, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I'd need to finesse that a little bit, but that's kind of what, what is, uh, what is coming to mind at the moment. My mom was a huge believer of the law of attraction. So that was just like, oh yeah, that's, that's really, it's kind of, she always used to say, um, be, be the kind of person you want to have in your life. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you know, obviously, if you're gonna if you're gonna be an asshole, you're just gonna attract other assholes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that was that. I, I like that one. What do you? What about you, Katie? Gosh. So the difference between like a semblance in Ruby and a quirk from My Hero Academia is kind of like what's throw me off because I have I know what I'd want my quirk to be, but I don't know if it could apply to a semblance. So I will describe that. And maybe it can be translated. Okay. So if I know if what I you mean, though. Ha- yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't go here. I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I love my hero, but um, it's on my list. Yes, please watch it. But yeah, I think what I want my quirk to be, and it would just kind of be more of a convenient quirk. Like it wouldn't necessarily do like a lot, but it would make me happy. Is I really love food, and if I could manipulate any food I'm about to eat to make it taste and like I'm experiencing eating a different food so like for example if I have a celery stick and I can eat it and truly convince myself that it tastes and like feels like a breadstick I want that <laughs> I feel like that so, would be like being able to influence the the ability to influence your, others perceptions yeah your perception Ooh. or someone else's perception but more so than like emerald's ability because emerald can make yeah. you see whatever she wants you to see because yours would be i want, I want to you just to experience yeah. whatever i want you to experience yeah, yeah it's and like i mostly want to use it in the food control. situations <laughs> okay yeah then ooh, that actually makes it a lot deeper than i was thinking yeah. okay sensory controls actually then, yeah. kind of really cool sounding too Ooh, sensory control okay then i will do that and oh, for a semblance, that could be good, especially in the medical medical field, because it could make people think that they're not in pain if they're in oh, pain. So that oh, yeah. when you're like, when you're taking them somewhere like to the hospital to get help, they're not going to pass out from the pain. Their body will still See, do what my, it's doing. But sometimes my mentally, neutral evil ooh, I love mind this. and the fact that my Ruby OC works for Salem uh, <laughs> is going the opposite direction of like, or you could make people think that they're in pain and incapacitate No, of, them. of course. <laughs> but but in my world, I'm not a villain. Well, I'm a good guy that's just trying to eat some breadsticks. My, my OC, <laughs> her name's Celeste, uh, and I've talked about her many times, and I love talking about her. It's like, ask me about my yeah. OC. Um, <laughs> her semblance is uh, the power of persuasion. She's able to kind of nudge decisions and... Um, yeah, like kind of almost like Jedi mind tricks in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's it, but it's kind of really limited. I based the limitations for it off of um, the command seals from f- the Fate series, where it has to be a very specific order in order to like influence them. Like it, you can do little influences of like, hmm, do I want Dr. Pepper or Coca-Cola? And it's like, if they're leaning towards Dr. Pepper, you could be like, no, you want Coca-Cola because it was already an option that they were considering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, you could do a more powerful one where if they're like, no, I'm not, I'm not budging on this. Like at the expense of more of your aura, you could change their mind completely yeah but it it takes a lot of it takes a lot out of your your aura but her the the name of her semblance i called it silver tongue that's that's what the to go back to what it was called is it was silver tongue 
Okay, I have a follow up question. Mm-hmm. Does okay. the power of your semblance matter depending on whether or not the person knows that it's being worked upon them? Um. So, are you saying that, like, for example, with my sensory thing, like, do they know that it's happening to them, or? Well, yeah, this is a question for both person. of you, and I guess I'm basically saying, like, does your semblance become less powerful if someone is aware that you're working the semblance on them like yes. are they mm. so celeste okay. very much so like if she has to catch you off guard or like okay. catch okay. you kind of unawares because if you mm-hmm. if you like see her if you like see her coming like she uses it for a lot of like stealth related combat actually where she'll make someone kind of like look the opposite direction so she can sneak past them mm-hmm. um and so it's, uh, but it's very much so like if you see her, it's all kind of in the power of her gaze, either line of sight or actual like direct uh, eye contact. So, yeah. but if you're aware, like if she's looking you in the eye and you're having a conversation and you're aware of what her semblance is, you're already kind of a little bit more tolerant. Like you're, you have a little bit more of a tolerance to it because, okay. because of the fact that you know what she's capable of. Right. I think for mine, for like the sensory one, if, for example, I'm making someone feel pleasure, if they are like hurting, you know, like, oh, my my leg is hurting, I need to get to the hospital and like, and I'm giving them feelings of you're okay, you're okay. And if they want to experience that feeling, if they don't try to resist it, then it won't be less powerful. Like, yes, they know I'm doing it to them. But if they if they lean into it and they're like, I do want to experience this, they will. But if they want to try to resist, so for example, if there's like an attacker and they know my semblance and I try to make them feel like their arm is on fire, they're still going to feel it. It's not going to stop, but they can resist it through the power of the mind a little more because they know that it's fake, I guess. Right. So there's like a certain yeah. buy, buy-in or opt-out element. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, only only if they're aware, though, because if this attacker has never met me before and then all of a sudden their arm feels on fire, they're not going to know that it's not actually on fire. Right. Like, yeah, so I think that would be it. But, like, if you want to experience the feeling I'm giving you, you will feel it, like, fully unless you try to resist it. Mm-hmm. I love talking yeah. about like superpowers and semblances yeah. and quirks because oh, it's yeah. just it's just so cool. Like any any world that has like characters that have superpowers, it just has always intrigued me so much. Oh so. yeah. I uh my quirk I came up with is just kind of silly and stupid though. <laughs> <laughs> Because I need it. It's and it's because it's kind of like what you were saying, Katie, is that like quirks are are a little bit different than semblances in that I feel like yeah. you know, in the My Hero Academia world, um you know, it's like some people have more powerful quirks, which is what make them heroes or villains, and then other people yeah. just have like funky little eccentricities, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And I came up with this at a con once when somebody asked me, and anybody who knows me in real life knows that for whatever reason, I am a very burpy person. <laughs> like, I burp way above average, like more so than your regular person. And I think some of oh it has gosh. to do with VO, like the, your your constant intake of deep breaths for VO because I yes. burp a lot in the booth. Um but I decided that my quirk would be kind of like like that scene in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory where like I can use like my burps to like propel me like, you oh know, like gosh, up into yes. the air and propel me forward and I can use it to propel things away from me. <laughs> Flying burps. I, I love it. This has to be real now. <laughs> so, yes, that's, that's a very that's true, great. true to Elizabeth quirk. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. I really I really wish yeah. that I was familiar with the with that universe because I've heard nothing but great things. Cole, um, our one of our voice actors, he has been on my case like ever since we met basically about watching my hero <laughs> and I'm just like it's it's on my list. Just please let I me, highly let recommend me get this, to it on my own time. Yeah. Like don't This most recent <laughs> season is very good, like it's yeah. I think we're three or four seasons in, so it's not it's not too late. It's not too difficult oh, yeah. right now to catch up. It's not One Piece yet. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. God. Or like fairy tale or <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> like thirteen seasons. Yes. 
Well, cool, cool. I think that is all of our questions. I think we made a podcast. Elizabeth, Woo! where can they find you? And do you have anything you'd like to promote? Oh, goodness. Well, uh, first things first, um, I am most active on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and uh, Twitter, you can find me about Elizabeth M. And Instagram, I must have been the first person, first Elizabeth Maxwell to join Instagram because I'm literally just Elizabeth Maxwell. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, oh, I know. Nice. That rarely happens. <laughs> and let's see. Can I talk about anything? This is always one of the hardest parts about being um, involved yeah, in this industry. NDAs and stuff, yeah, yeah, NDAs and so much stuff. As you mentioned, um, I'm currently working, Bo, um, I'm currently working on a new anime called Plunderer. Um, Mm -hmm. that I think we're like three or four episodes uh, into broadcasting. I love that show. I know I'm biased, um, but it's some of the most fun I've had um, doing anime dubbing in a long time. The character is really pretty similar to how I am in real life, um, but on, you know, a little bit on steroids. But uh, (laughs) I I highly recommend Plunderer (laughs) if you haven't already watched it. And... um, Oh gosh, I guess per Persona Five Royal is going to be coming out soon in in oh, March. Oh yeah! So I'm super stoked about that. And uh, off the top of my head, I think that's all I can talk about. <laughs> all right, you don't have any like personal projects that you're doing. Like for example, Lauren Landa said that she's doing some audiobook thing with a bunch of other voice actors, and she was like, want people to do that. It was more of a personal thing. Like, oh, if you don't, fun. that's cool. No, um, yeah. I mean, honestly, work keeps me so busy, and I'm so invested in all the projects I'm working on right now that I don't, oh, I don't yeah. really have any uh, personal side stuff going on at the moment. Um, okay. Any cons you're going to this year that oh, you can talk about? Oh, yeah. Well, a ton. Um, I always tell people... Uh, go take a look at my my website is about Elizabeth Maxwell dot com. And I have um, my convention schedule that I update on there. But uh, my my next one, the one that's coming up most recently will be Plus Ultra Expo in Plano, Texas on Valentine's Day weekend. Yeah. And it's kind of fun because the one that happened last weekend was, I think, primarily Heroes. And then the one that's happening this weekend. Next weekend that I'm going to, I'm calling it the bad boys and girls Ooh. of my hero academia. Because, you know, Midnight's not a villain, but she's she's a bad yeah. girl. Ooh, I love it. I know nothing about the show. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, Bo. you'll watch it one day. But where can they find you, Bo? Um, well, as always, you guys can find me um, at Bo from Kruby, B-E-A-U-F-R-O-M-K-R-W-B-Y on Twitter. Um my Twitch, where I do all of my gaming streams and my like live panel reaction shit, whatever it is, um, twitch.tv forward slash CB Cosplay. And of course, you can find me on the Kruby Productions uh, YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash Kruby Productions. Um, and this podcast and the thing that I want to plug is, of course, the thing that I've been plugging for like two and a half, three months now <laughs> is our upcoming VR short, uh, Nondescript Winter Holiday 2, the sequel yeah. to the sequel to our, our very, very lovely uh, uh, short holiday short from last year um, following the events of Team Juniper and what happened uh, when everyone got snowed in at Beacon. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. I, you know, I got to listen to the first pass of the music a couple days ago, got to hear the music for the credits, and it had me crying. And so I'm really excited for Aww. you guys to see this. And hopefully yeah, it's, it's good. this will actually be coming out. This episode's supposed to come out on the 18th, I think. So if everything goes according to plan... Nondescript yes, Winter Holiday 2 should be out sometime this week that you're listening to it, guys. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. Here's hoping. Exciting. And what about and you, yes, Katie? You guys can find me on Twitter at Connie Day Official. That's K-A-N-I-D-A-Y Official. Or just Google Connie Day. I'll probably come up on, like, Instagram and stuff. And you can find me um, at Kruby Productions, of course, the YouTube channel, the Twitter, Ruby Abridged. 
You can also find me um, on Dr. Crafty on YouTube, and you can find me at the Weird Flex But OK Podcast, another podcast that I host with my friend Jordan Jacks Blade Downs. And you can find our Twitter at Weird Flex Pod. And yeah, I'd like to promote, of course, Perpetually Ajar. Thank you guys for listening all the way through. <laughs> and all of our winter short stuff, all of our new projects. We have a lot of cool stuff for you guys. Mm-hmm. Come see us. At cons and stuff. I think we're going to be going to one soon, and um, we will tell you about that next episode, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, we did it. We made a podcast. Um, quick, someone, say something funny. Silence, you boob. Excellent. <laughs> All right. I think I want to name that the episode. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Well, oh, thank my you. gosh. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for joining us. It yes. was a oh, thank my you. pleasure, guys. pleasure and honor having you here. Thank you. All I right. had a wonderful time. Yes, a we had a wonderful time. time with you too. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! There's so many name options for the episode now. <laughs> we always we forgot oh, to God. mention that that we always come up with yeah. the name based off of something that was said in the episode. So, yeah. So now it's between OG now. Winter. It's now between OG Winter Schnee, uh, Winterful Time, and whatever the other thing that was just said was. <laughs> oh no! Oh, how did we forget it already? Silence, I'm you so- boob. Oh, yeah. Silence, Silence boob. boob. All right. So one of those will be the name. Thank you so much. We made a podcast and we will see you next time. Awesome. Bye. Bye.